Welcome to English 123, Studies in Literature and Genre. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of what we will be studying in this course, as well as the different ways of analyzing and interpreting literature that this course will introduce you to. Studies in Literature and Genre looks at the different types of literature, novels, short fiction, poems, plays, and a whole bunch of others. It examines both the differences in how they are written and the differences in how they tell stories or otherwise present content to readers. There are a lot of different frameworks for how literature can be analyzed. Before I get to the ones that we will be using in this course, we need to pause for a second and clarify what kinds of writing are considered to be literature. While there are a lot of different genres and formats for writing, in the most general terms, writing can be divided into three very broad categories, expository writing, philosophical writing, and literature. Expository writing is writing that is done primarily to convey information. Things like textbooks, instruction manuals, legal briefs, articles in scholarly journals or in medical journals, newspapers and magazine articles, encyclopedia entries, and reports such as financial reports are all examples of expository writing. Philosophical writings are published works that provide nonfiction musings on philosophical or spiritual questions. Philosophical writing also encompasses religious writing. Literature is writing that is done as a form of creative and or artistic expression. It includes novels, short fiction, poetry, plays, comics and graphic novels, memoirs, biographies, and forms of creative nonfiction like personal essays. It does not include films, TV and streaming series, popular music, video games, or social media posts, all of which are forms of media and not literature. Three of the most common frameworks for analyzing literature are narrative analysis, thematic analysis, and cultural analysis. These are the three frameworks that we will be using in our study of literature in this course. We will be going into all of this in much more detail over the course of the entire semester. But just to give you an idea of the kinds of things that we will be talking about when we analyze the readings we will be doing for class, narrative analysis involves analyzing the story that is being told. Or, in the case of poetry, which does not always tell stories, the emotions, sensory experiences, or moments in time that are explored in the poem. Narrative analysis includes consideration of what happens in the story, what and who the story is about, and how the plot events that make up that story are organized and presented to readers. In other words, both what the story is and how the story is told. Narrative analysis can, and often does, also include consideration of the perspective from which the story is told. Perspective in this sense encompasses both the point of view within the story, so in other words, from which perspectives of which character or characters within the story the story is told, but it also encompasses consideration of the perspective of the author in writing the story, and how that impacts both the subject of the literary work in question and what that literary work has to say about the subject. This is also something that we will be examining in this class. Because analyzing literature always involves analyzing the deeper meaning of the literary work, the second kind of analysis that we will be learning and practicing in English 123 is thematic analysis. You can think of the themes of a work of literature as being the larger ideas or concepts that are explored through its story as well as the deeper meanings that are communicated through that story. 
Thematic analysis focuses on interpreting those larger ideas and concepts. Just as a point of clarification, a theme is not the same thing as a moral or a lesson. Literature does not necessarily try to or want to teach lessons to readers. Instead, literature tries to get us to think about ourselves or the world around us and to reflect on some aspect of those things. Themes, then, are the things that the work of literature asks us to think about and reflect on. At the same time, the stories that literary works tell about ourselves and the world around us both impact and are impacted by the things that we as a culture believe about ourselves, the world around us, and the places of different groups of people within that world. Literature reflects these things, but it also helps to shape them through the ways in which the stories that we read impact the way that we see and think about the world around us and our own individual places in that world. This cultural analysis of literature is the third way that we will be examining the things that we read in English 123, as we will be considering not only their stories, their methods of storytelling, and their themes, but also their larger social and cultural contexts and implications. So let's get started. Welcome to English 123.